Sir, may I come in? Come in, please. Come in. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Good evening sir. sir. Don't, please. Thank you, sir. Mr. Shubham Shindhyade. Am I correct? Sir, Shandhyade. Shandhyade. Good. So, tell us about yourself. Introduce yourself to the board. Sir, I am Shubham. I was born in Muzaffarpur, Bihar. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, I did my engineering from Bitspilani. Mm -hmm. I worked for two years in the private sector in mm -hmm. Bangalore. Mm -hmm. And so thereafter, I have been preparing for the civil services. This is my third attempt. Third attempt. Yes, sir. What is the result of your first two attempts? So in first, I went to interview and missed the final cutoff by 11 marks. Okay. And in second, I could not qualify mains by three marks. Okay, good. Very good. <clears throat> now you think you are more prepared? Then your second and first attempt? Yes, sir. Uh, I have tried to uh, fill my knowledge gaps, especially in the mains perspective, or interview perspective. Hmm. In, in both, sir, I have uh, tried to fill the gaps which I have. I tried to fill the gap. Very good. So tell me, how have you tried to fill up the gap? Yes, sir. So for example, in my optional, I identified the questions uh, which I could not attempt. What is your optional? Because I could not see your It is Hindi literature. Hindi literature. Hindi literature. Yes, okay. Sir. Okay. I found the areas which are weak. So I found that some areas I don't have enough content. So I tried to build that content up. So I still ask, which were the areas where you were weak? So there is a khand called Bhasha khand, mm. which is basically Vyakaran, Vyakaran etc. Mm. So that was slightly on the weaker side. So I tried to refer to the notes and the topper copies. Mm. And then I tried to fill that gap. Sir. Mm. That's all. That's one area. Yes, sir. So another area is my uh, GS. In GS, for example, I lack the practical examples when I'm writing something. I try to incorporate some uh, practical examples and implementations, the models mm -hmm. that we have. Uh, so that was another area, sir, to improve the marks in GS. No, good enough. Good enough. When can you start the Hindi literature in terms of time? When it actually Hindi literature is started? Yes, sir. Historically. Sir, historically. How far back can you go? Sir, uh, historically, we can uh, Sanskrit is from where the language oh, is coming. Hindi. Yes, Hindi I'm is sir, Hindi. Thousand, uh, thousand ACE when Prithviraj Raso was written. Uh, somewhere in that uh, uh, period, we say that the Hindi language, uh, the independent language began. Which period? Which, which year? Sir, thousand, uh, sir, 700 to 1000 ACE yes. after Christ. Then, what, which uh, Prithviraj was written? Sir, Prithviraj Raso by Chand Badrai. Written. So it was in Hindi, you, you call it Hindi. And when is the modern Hindi started? So modern Hindi is after 18, 1850s, which is Bhartendu Harish Chandra is considered <laughs> the first uh, modern Hindi uh, literature writer. <coughs> okay. And where was it? Which place, which city where it was started? So it started in uh, Kashi, Banaras. Mm -hmm. And in the other areas of UP, sir, printing press came up. And uh, via dramas, it was popularized. Mm -hmm. And sir, uh, also the Ram Charit Manas played a very key role in popularizing the Hindi language uh, and also the drama throughout the country, sir. Tell me, there is something called uh, Fort William College. Uh, yes, sir. Does it have any role in the yes, propagation sir. of Hindi? Yes, sir. How? Where? So Fort William College Gilgiris, was... Uh, Gilgiris was a spell principal, if I remember correctly. Yes, sir. So Fort William College was used to train the civil servants. So, uh, sir, there, uh, Gilchrist, William Gilchrist uh, was uh, heading that and he, uh, with other people like Lallu Lal, uh, was another contributor. And, sir, they together published many books and uh, made some uh, books which were specific for trading the Indian bureaucracy in the Khari Boli, which is uh, the major part of Hindi language. And with that, sir, it started its administrative use on a larger scale. So, from Fort William said many books were also published. For example, Mr. Lalulal uh, published, uh, if I'm not wrong, Prem Sagar, something was the name. Mm, Prem Sagar, yes. Yes, sir. And so that is how uh, the language evolved at the administrative scale. Okay. Only administrative, not literature? Also the literature, sir, because uh, they tried to see that uh, instead of Urdu that we are using, or Hindustani, or Braj Bhasha, or Abdi, that words that we are using, what could be a suitable counterpart in the what we call Manak Hindi, uh, the uh, Hindi that should become the standard. So they try to standardize the language also. Also, the uh, grammar was standardized mm -hmm. there. So it had a huge contribution overall, sir. Mm -hmm. Quite right. Okay. Now, uh, 
uh, there is something called uh, official language uh, of the government of India. Hmm? Uh, what, what do you call? What is what is the law governing it? What which law governs it? Sir, there is law. Act, yes, official Act. Language is Act, sir, 1963. Ah, what does it say? Sir, uh, Article 343 uh, kept English for 15 years and after that Hindi was supposed to be the official language and all the parts of government were supposed to work in that. So this uh, law was brought. This law essentially says that the English can continue as an official language till the states which are non-Hindi speaking pass a resolution in their assembly that now from now on English can be discontinued and Hindi can become the sole official language. Okay. And what is the national language of India? Sir, there is no constitutionally defined national language. On other parameters, we do say that Hindi can serve as a national language because it had a huge role in the independence movement before that the Bhakti period. In modern India also, sir, 40% people directly and 30% indirectly as per census 2011 speak this language. No other language has this kind of spread. So on that basis, people do say it's a national language, but there is no constitutionally defined term as national language in the constitution. Any law about national language? If the constitution is not talking, any law is there about the national language? I'm not aware, sir. You're not aware. Okay, good. Is there any languages enumerated in the constitution? Are there any languages enumerated in the constitution? Yes, sir. The uh, eighth schedule mentions 22 languages uh, of the various languages spoken in India. It is what mentioned. is their status? I mean, if schedule says what about them? Uh, sir, Hindi and English of English is official language. Uh, I'm not sure, sir, what uh, these are exactly called. About the language in the eighth schedule. Yes, sir. What is their status as per the constitution? I'm not sure, sir. I'm not sir. sure. Okay, fair enough. Now, um, outside your Hindi literature, Hindi area, which is your, of course, subject and your use in that, uh, do you think I am going to some new other area and I am very curious to know? Uh, what do you think is the contribution of GST in the revenue of the central government and of course state government consequently, the revenue of the central government, what is the contribution say in terms of percentage, say in terms of any other parameter you want to say number or numerical, GST? Yes, sir. so GST is the uh, biggest contributor uh, of that uh, taxation in India. Each year, each month, sir. Uh, uh, biggest, uh, but how much? So there are other sources also, yes, other taxes also. How much is GST's contribution? Sir, I know it is 1.34 lakh crore per month on average. Yes, that's, I'm not sir, sure, sir. that's revenue every month coming. Mm -hmm. Every month there is a figure coming into newspaper. Yes, yes. This much is collection, this much collection, this much collection. So some figure you can quote of September 2023, December 2023. That's right. I can understand that. That's good. <clears throat> but. Uh, in terms of percentage or anything like that, how much is GST's contribution to our Sorry, state? sir, I'm not aware of it. Fair. Uh, you can go back and check it I'll on check this. It. Now, if uh, that's the case, you say biggest contribution, if I take your word, uh, if the GST uh, goes up, suppose you say 1.6 lakh, 1.5 lakh in a particular month, or it's more than previous month or more than corresponding month in the year, what does it reflect? Sir, it reflects that the country's economic economy is growing, the businesses are growing, demand is there in the economy, supply in there is the economy. It also reflects that there is a formalization in the economy uh, because... Uh, they are all very general terms. I want to you want expect some very specific. There are always, whenever data comes, it comes that which sectors contribute, service sector, agriculture sector, uh, uh, put, uh, uh, the, the heavy industry sector, all sector will break up also gives, Ministry yes, of Finance, yes, sir. Uh, GST coming from which sector. Yes, so, which sector is giving more GST? Sorry, sir. I have to check, so, sir. it's easy to say economy is growing, business is growing, and so exist just like that. Okay. Now, if uh, GST collection is increasing, uh, so it means uh, uh, 
what is the role of uh, digitization in more collection of gst so digital uh, digitalization is a key pillar for gst to work efficiently because oh, there is oh. a portal sir how oh. yes sir i mean these are of course key pillar of the how oh, be specific i want yes, to be sir. specific and sir because focus. gst can be filed uh, through the gst portal there is also e way bill mm. uh, which can be generated from the point of origin uh, to the point of destination and it can be digitally tracked also sir uh, there is uh, any uh, sir cases that are pending it can be uh, digitally sir the initial hearing can, can take place e way bill uh, which uh, transaction up to which level transaction e way bill is not required up to which beyond which level e way bill is required sorry sir Sir, I'm not sure. Good. Thank you very much, Thank you, sir. sir. Uh, well, <clears throat> as far as agriculture is concerned, its contribution in GDP is reducing decade-wise. Earlier it was more than fifty percent. Now we have gone below twenty percent, say seventeen or eighteen percent. Uh, what do you suggest should we go below 10% sir in the developed country like usa we see only 2% contribution of agriculture in the gdp so if the manufacturing and service sector grows its contribution would definitely go down so sir it is not uh, a bad sign or anything but uh, if there is excess labor there we need to uh, channelize them but simultaneously we are also observing that around 60% of the people and particularly the females those who are residing in the villages 80% of them they are engaged in agriculture so still they are their contribution is reducing and reducing is it a good sign sir with so much labor being uh, there in the sector and it's still the gdp contribution being not that significant is not a very good sign which means there is a lot of disguised unemployment in the sector and government first of all make needs to make uh, ensure that the agriculture uh, become productive even for the subsistence farmer and the excess labor can be absorbed in the other sector and the skilling uh, those uh, females and other people uh, there males uh, can ensure that they can go to secondary sector or, or tertiary sectors government try to make the rural masses skillful a very good scheme was launched say 5 6 years back can you name that scheme so pm kaushal vikas sir kaushal vikas ddugky yes okay uh the question is that the masses who are engaged in the agriculture in the field of agriculture and the agriculture itself we should make it a scientific one so the recently a year back in the recent months particularly the government is emphasizing upon use of drones in agriculture how you foresee is there any future for it yes sir sir government is emphasizing on drone the kisan drone has been launched so drones can be used for the precision farming which essentially means that we can go and detect that which uh, part uh, if any part of a crops is going bad or uh, if there is any weed on any point so targeted uh, farming and precision farming can be done also drone can uh, help to uh, in the fertilizing the field in the correct amount also sir drone can be used to remove the weeds so sir uh, drones is uh, also it can be used to analyze if there is any crop failures and hence insurance can be claimed so it has a very important uh, role sir say spraying the fertilizer or any pesticide or any agrochemical through the drones you are saying that it is a precision farming yes it is this will save definitely the quantity but the cost is very much manually if we spray it cost in northern area less than 300 per service in acre the drone is charging around 1000 so is not it costly to the farmer so it is costly but if group of farmer combine together and form a large producer organization or if the custom hiring centers give drone at the nominal cost to the farmers then it will be very useful sir good 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 okay now the question is if we want to increase productivity per unit acre then we have to uh, you know go for integrated nutrient management what do we mean by integrated nutrient management yes 
So integrated is, for example, if there is a mixed farming, which means a uh, person also keeps livestock and uh, also the crops, then the uh, let's say the waste product of the livestock can be used to make fertilizers and then it can be put back in the field. Similarly, fishery is also accompanied. Some of the waste could go there. So the idea is that the waste should not be left out and somehow used in the input in some other stage. So that makes the farming integrated and closed loop set. Have you heard of soil health card scheme? Yes. What is that? Sir, in soil health card, the, uh, uh, the soil health is checked and ensured that which nutrients are required in this soil for which uh, exact uh, cropping. So the uh, additional fertilizer wastage will be reduced. Is not it that the integrated nutrient management, it is the nutrient management that take a sample, mm -hmm. get it analyzed, get the recommendation, then the precision dose is given to avoid the extra dose. Okay, which fertilizer we import? Uh, sir, potassium. It is the whole potassium is being imported. Yes, sir. Are you aware that urea is also being imported? Sir, yes, sir. The amount of urea, urea we use, 40 percent is imported. So around 33 percent or 40 percent. And what's about phosphorus fertilizers? So it is also largely imported. D in the form of DAP. Yes, sir. Uh, have you heard of Swamitu scheme? Yes, sir. What is that? Sir, PM Swamitya Yojana is drones is used to uh, map the exact land area which belongs to each farmer and based on that digital record can be given to them. It is done by Ministry of Panchayati Raj to ensure that land records are there and digitally available. See, land records are with the land revenue and with the Panchayati Raj are the villages. So, Swamitya is mapping the villages land within the limit which in Haryana and in northern state we call Lal Dora that we are mapping or the agricultural land we are mapping under Swamitra. So I am not fully sure but I think it is the agricultural land. Check it. Okay. Check it sir. It's a village land. Okay. Now, do you have any interest in sports? Yes sir. What controversy is going on that uh, the non-sports persons they are returning their awards a day or two. Can you tell me its impact on our coming days in the area of the sports? Yes, sir. So what we are seeing is essentially the politicization of the sports and because of uh, some political motives and uh, some background stories, which could be legitimate. But Supreme Court has given clear direction and the investigation is going on. But still in between some sports people are returning their awards. So in my personal humble belief that it is not a correct step in the right direction. They should not return your mind to say. At least not now when the sub duties matter and investigation is going on. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Say you are posted as a magistrate in a district, which is district agrarian with the agrarian background and there is agitation of farmers and the agitation has come in the news, national news. It's a big agitation. How will you handle? Sir, first of all, we need to find what are the demands, what are the interest parties, what are the stakeholders. So depending on that, if it is a group of stakeholders, we can talk to them, get their exact demands and see if they are reasonable. Then at the same time, we can talk to the press people and media and convey the government side of story as well, because the story should not be one dimensional only. Depending on that, the legitimate demands could be met. Also, sir, uh, some future promises can be made if it is a uh, correct uh, demand and the resources are not available as of now. So, depending on that and talking to stakeholders, sir, we can... Their yes. demands are of the level which as a magistrate, you cannot meet. Their demands are of the level which you have to send and talk at the level of the chief minister or at a, you know, a higher level, much higher level. They are asking for better remunerative prices, they are asking for some other favors which requires say uh, new statutes. So how will you handle and tackle? Sir, in that case, I would consult my seniors and those above me, ask for their guidance. The chief secretary uh, if, uh, can be contacted by me if I am at, at that level and convey to uh, uh, him, the, him or her the exact uh, demands. And then, sir, 
we can coordinate at that level. And at my level, sir, I can ensure that the law and order is maintained. There is no jamming of traffic. And uh, so your your duty is more concerned with the law and order on that day. It's okay. Thank you. Please. Yeah. I'm good, sir. Okay, I see uh, there is a, you know, uh, in 2013, you have done 12, right? Yes, sir. And uh, it took you five years to complete your BE. I took a break of one year, sir. To why, why is it so? I wanted to get into IIT, sir. So I prepared uh, for one year. Fine, fine. Um, you must have heard about, you know, the judicial, National Judicial Appointment Commission. Yes, sir. What is the controversy regarding this? Yes, sir. Sir, in the uh, present system of appointment of judges, the collegium system is being used, which was the outcome of the second and third judges case. Government has essentially been saying that this is leading to some kind of nepotism and the hiring is not transparent as of now. So government wants a seat on the table to have equal number of executive and judiciary members sitting and having a consensus on who to appoint. When this amendment was brought, the judiciary struck it down and said it is a violation of Article 50, which is the separation of the judiciary and executive. So this tussle is going on. Government is saying that you want to place on the table. The judiciary is currently refusing. So. Right. Recently, uh, Prime uh, President has actually called for all India judicial uh, services. What do you think about this? When once uh, all India judicial services commission like UPSC yes. is constituted and recruits a ju judiciary. Article three one four are mentioned the uh, concept of AIGS and it can be uh, done and. Uh, uh, the appointees should be at the district level, uh, they'll get appointed. So it has some positive aspects because it will attract some good talent and uh, the integrated structure of our judiciary will get a strengthened because of it. Some states are wary of it because they think that the it has some federal connotations and federal uh, issues will emerge in that regard. And the language barrier is also said to be one of the uh, thing which is hampering its uh, uh, bringing this thing. So the consensus building is currently going on and uh, as of now sir i'm not aware if any development is there in this direction how will it impact on integration of uh, judiciary yes sir so uh, we have a single constitution and the, the, the in cases can go from lowest judiciary to supreme court so if it is integrated then civil servants could be moved uh, uh, from very uh, to various state for example today uh, the that is are of a particular state and stay there their entire life except for the high court judges maybe. So uh, in that case, sir, if it is more of all India nature, then the politici politicization would uh, reduce. I'm not sure if it is there, but just uh, I'm mentioning that it can have that impact. Also, sir, uh, central government can, uh, uh, whatever policies of central government will be more easily communicated to them. So in that sense, I think. Uh, many reports like VDAM report, where it is of democracy report or, you know, Freedom House report, actually registered India as a, you know, declining democracy. How do you find uh, Sir, uh, yes. health and the strength of the India's democracy? So it is true that uh, we have our democracy uh, as a robust democracy. We could have some few internal issues, but I saw the VDM report, it was saying that India, it kept India below Afghanistan. So these kind of rankings are in my personal, very humble opinion, does not reflect the true character of the democracy we have. We have a very robust democracy. And uh, there could be some lesser interest, I'm not fully aware, but uh, the government of India at its level has clearly stated that these are institutions of concern. So, sir, I think that we cannot take the ranking at the face value. So, can we think that that report is intentionally prepared to mal malign India? So, without much proof, we cannot say, but time of history, it looks like that, depending on the kind of ranking that they have. Fine. Fine. Uh, what do you uh, know about uh, India? <clears throat> positions, uh, you know, on Israel and Palestine war. Yes, sir. So India has always maintained that it is the support. In, it's in the support of two-state solution. We also have a dehyphenization policy where we have different foreign uh, relationship with the uh, of the uh, country. And sir, uh, we have called for the humanitarian aid. We have called for the refugee exchange. We have also uh, voted in favor of the uh, cessation of the violence and ceasefire. So we are, uh, sir, of the opinion that the two-state solution is legitimate. And we have also condemned the October 7 attack. So this is the India's stand, sir. Fine. A new uh, act. Uh, you must have uh, heard about Bharti Nyai Samhita, Bharti Nagarik Suraksha Samhita, Bharti, you know, Evidence Sakshi Samhita. Right? Yes. Uh, act. How this act basically 
will transform the criminal judicial system in India. Uh, sir, uh, Honorable PM said that one of the punch plan is to decolonize our mind by 2047. So these laws passed in 1860 and 1872 were uh, old laws which did uh, uh, good in their lifetime. But as of now, we are entering into Amrit Kal, sir. So we need new laws which are robust. For example, Raj uh, Dro has been changed to Desh Dro, so which means that we are becoming more flourishing uh, democracy. Also, the uh, um, mob lynching there is a special provision to tackle with those challenges. So these laws sir tries to have uh, the basic foundation that we had and incorporate the needs of the time in them to ensure also sir the uh, penal code has been changed to the nyay which means we are moving from a uh, police state toward a welfare state because British wanted a police state and we are a welfare state so it also uh, shows that vibrant nature of our democracy that we are more welfare oriented and justice oriented. Fine. Uh, one uh, last question I would ask you know India you know, is aspired to be third largest uh, economy. Right, but at the same time, 80 crore people needs, uh, you know, Pradhan Mantri Garib Jan Kalyan Yojana, uh, you know, uh, need help, right, to in order to survive themselves. How is it contradictory, and how it actually, you know, reflects upon the great divide in India between haves and have not? Yes. So there has been uh, inequality in India, and we just one percent own forty percent of the wealth, and uh, as per Oxfam report. And uh, uh, we see that uh, 80 crore people still depend on the food security to the government. So we are seeing the economic divide, sir, but the government is coming up with the schemes to, uh, for example, the skill India and Koshal Devikas. So if we provide them skill, good education and good health services, for example, PMJ, health insurance is there. So with these, sir, we can build a safety net for the people at the bottom. And uh, with that, sir, and good growth engine technology, we can... Uh, and good business environment conducive ease of doing business, we can aspire to be third economy, third largest economy. So those measures you have actually named will address the divide? So it will try to bridge it. For example, in, in the growth period, we see the inequality increases as per the Kuznet curve as the, because everybody is not generating wealth. Some are generating the wealth and then it is being trickled down. So in the growth period, we see that, but it will, I think, overall. Uh, Fine, uh, that's, uh, you know, now Dr. Jitendra will ask you for your Sumam. question. Uh, yes, Sumam, you are from Bihar? Yes, sir. So, Patliputra had been a dominant city in ancient time for the at least 1000 years. So, what was the main reason due to which Patliputra become prominent? That is Magad. And what is the main reason behind the decline of Patliputra after 1000 years? So, yes, sir. tell me briefly. So, Patliputra was the, uh, was, uh, Kingdom uh, was a capital of a king, for example, Gupta king, Maurya king, and it had a river Ganga, which was a very fertile, so agriculture was good. Also, the river was being used for the transportation, so, and it became a center for Buddhism nearby, so this place uh, prospered overall. But, sir, after some time, we see the uh, the capital shifted uh, toward Kannauj, and in the in that period, we see a lot of political disturbances, and because of that, sir, uh, Patliputra uh, suffered and the kind of prosperity it, didn't, it have in those period could not be continued beyond after Gupta period particularly. Oh, let's tell me some dynasty who ruled over Patliputra. Uh, sir, Mauryas, hmm. Guptas. Sung. 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 That's it. Okay. So, if we come to the medieval times and the especially modern times, have we read pigeon movements in Bihar? Pigeon so, movements in Bihar? In the colonial yes, period, sir. pigeon movements. Yes, sir. So, who was the most important leader? Sir, in the undivided Bihar, Birsa Munda. Uh, yeah, Birsa Munda. Santhal revolt was there. Santhal revolt. In the 1930s, very famous leader who became all India level pigeon level leader. 1930s, sir. Hmm. 1930s. Do you know so Swami Sajaran Sarasati? Yes, sir. He was the one. All India. So, Kisar, yeah, what was his relationship with Gandhi? With Gandhi. With Gandhi. Sajaran Sarasati. Basically, I'm asking the views. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, he formed All India Kisan Sabha mm -hmm. and he tried to unite all the farmers community uh, and do uh, work for their welfare. Gandhiji, sir, also uh, tried to work for the masses and till Gandhiji arrived, the movement was basically till upper class and middle class. But Gandhiji also made Champaran movement and he also tried to uh, uh, People at the bottom, he tried to uh, make them more aware about the national consciousness. So in that sense, they both tried to bring the national level consciousness at the ground level, at the farmer level. Have you read about Swami Sadhana Sarasati? 
like one page two page somewhere swami sadanand sarasvati or you have just read for upsc just just for upsc okay do you know uh, rajendra prasad yes so matlab how was his relation with nehru sir i am aware that uh, he opposed uh, some of the provisions of the hindu marriage bill hmm. uh, sorry hindu code bill and uh, i think uh, mr nehru was more inclined toward a uh, socialist uh, society socialist point of view and mr rajendra prasad did not exactly share those views so in that context there was some friction between them that is it is always said that rajendra prasad ruled for two terms initially two years and then two terms 12 years but it is said that he was not well treated by the prime minister do you agree i don't have enough uh, knowledge sir or enough evidence to substantiate uh, this uh, but we do find some friction uh, because he refused to sign some bills and then mr nehru kind of threatened to get him removed from the position okay. sir i have read about opening of somnath temple yes sir the opening ceremony yes, what sir. was that sir rajendra prasad wanted to go there as a, a chief a guest or this man to open in the ceremony and mr nehru was opposed to the idea that state and religion should not mix in that context sir there was a friction so you are from muzaffarpur district uh, have you have you been there sorry sir. have you lived in muzaffarpur yes sir uh, till which time uh, sir after i was in bengal initially i moved to muzaffarpur after 10 and 10th 11th 12th i lived there and after that uh, two two so more you Sur- live in a city you live in a urban area Yes, so near to urban area there is a block in muzaffarpur called musari yes, tell me something about musari and revolt pigeon revolts in musari after independence especially in the 1970s sorry sir read about musari do you know jp japakash yes sir so he had visited and many of the zamindars had been killed in muzaffarpur in 1969 okay it is a land grab movement in muzaffarpur in the in the area which is near to 10 km of your residence okay thank you sir uh, other person i want to ask from bihar D- tell me a name of uh, tell, tell you tell me a name of ngo which become very uh, powerful for the women in bihar especially for the help self help group the role of women have changed in the economy society because of that particular ngo it become so famous in india on which thousands of research had been done on that ngo sorry sir it is for the rural development women development no sir it is jivika do you know jivika jivika yes sir Haan, you have heard it's also a scheme by the government ha it's a government kind of ngo okay so you don't know okay. so can you tell me something pros and cons of the ban of wine in bihar yes sir sir cons are that it is leading to the exchequer loss of 4000 crores it is also clogging the jails judicial system police is being diverted to this a lot of boot legging people are bringing from nepal and so it's a basically administrative uh, i should say mess up in that sense because cj uh, ramana said that people uh, that the government should deliberate upon the policy before uh, uh, actually coming up this policy that what it will have impact on other uh, sectors and so good thing is that the uh, government is saying that there is reduced uh, domestic violence people are now saving the money and giving to their family i don't have any report to substantiate that uh, claim sir very nice one last question have you read about land reforms in bihar post independence sir bhudan movement i am aware other than so was it successful till yes, some sir. extent till some extent but i have heard people contributed those land which was basically non fertile and so overall it did have some impact and create some national level con- uh, sorry state level consciousness but it did not fully succeed in its uh, in its goals all right very nice so we conclude our discussion the shubham yes and uh, as far as i am concerned i am generally very satisfied with your presentation and uh, uh generally you have prepared i think you have prepared yourself quite well for when is your interview sir on 16th of january 16th january. january so you have 15 more days you can still improve on any certain area i have certain suggestions for you to uh, consider which may help you in improving your uh, performance before the board uh, uh, one is is uh, your eye contact should be with entire board time to time not focus to uh, one member of course the member ask question should be the major attention you pay but uh, could you could you see watch here and there also 
like that. Now, in your presentation, you are slightly fast. Okay. You seem to be in a hurry. You want to convey a lot more things in a shorter time available to you. So, comfortable, pause. Your points are correct, good. You have good command, so why not uh, convey it quite uh, comfortably? Uh, uh, like uh, certain question, uh, which I suggest you to, like a sports management by uh, politician, mm -hmm. uh, something like that, require more thought on your side. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think uh, uh, you were not uh, to the point. Okay. You were you were slightly here and there. Uh, you have to learn more about that sports man about sports management. Uh -huh. Things like that. Similarly, GST, you have to be, uh, it's a good point which you mentioned, yes, but uh, more uh, uh, what is happening on that front. Something new which has come. New means in, in the recent past. Right? Appellate tribunal, is it? is it the GST appellate tribunal? Uh, GST, the council and things like that. The new law which has come is okay. in operation. There are meetings, there are day into meetings, there are improvement, some areas. Uh, and uh, the digitization is, is a helping in good compliance. Apart from other things, is good compliance. So compliance is improving. One of the reasons of increasing the GST collection is compliance is improving okay. of the law, which otherwise not good compliance was not there. It's thanks to digital. And above 50,000, they have to evade. Below 50,000 transactions, evade. So this is one area where they can still improve more and more in uh, digitization. Yes. Uh, this thing. Uh, also, you are using, as my friend observed, word we very often. We have done this thing, we have done this thing. We, you are representing country or India or government have done this thing. Okay. So, you can say that the nation is doing it, country is doing it, the government is doing it. Whatever you mean to say that, okay. like that, you can do this thing. Uh, otherwise, I am quite happy with your general presentation knowledge and uh, you have quick 15 days with you. Yes. You can still work on the point which I am suggesting unless my friends have to say something more. Now it is up to you to decide whether you will keep the beards or not. That I will is, remove it, sir. I think this is, is your sweet will. Uh -huh. If you want to keep it good, quite well trimmed. <laughs> otherwise, shave it up. Okay. Otherwise, you should not be looking thing. like uh, so tell so what kya gai. <laughs> uh, The rest is okay. Generally, okay. Uh, you should Absolutely. access, you have the time, you may access few of the websites of the government to see the reports and schemes. Okay. Generally, questions, they come from the schemes and the reports. Okay. Will you go with the same suit? Yes, sir. There should be more iron. I'll do it. Sir. Pant, at least your pant should be more iron. Yes. Okay. Like that. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. Best, you know, uh, the too much hand knowledge, hand, uh, you know, knowing. Uh, okay. So just keep up on the eye. Eye contact answer helps them. Yes. Also keep, uh, you know, uh, just uh, little eye on. I mean, other uh, numbers of people. Yes. So that they cannot be, you know, you know. Hold on, I avoided, right? Overall, in some answers, just, you know, partiality reflex. Don't actually, as I said, pointed out, right? Uh, always you talk about country nation right uh, and then avoid the word right don't you don't associate with the government right, right? government position is government position bureaucrat is a bureaucrat okay. fine yes <clears throat> of course we have must have open open-ended answers and solve problem solving you know uh, attitude fine yes. that's from my side okay. <clears throat> anything you want to add ask uh, no, sir, it's my flow and speed needs to be reduced. As slightly. Okay. Uh, slightly, not very much. They're not very fast. Mm -hmm. Your expression is okay, no uh, problem. Mm -hmm. But uh, it looks to be there's something... A bit slow you a, can, if you hurry. A bit slow. If you can do it, good. Otherwise, continue as natural as you are. But if you... Thank you. Thank you. All the best. All the best. All the best. All the best.